so happy. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, yesterday, I made, well, actually late last night, uh, I made a video that was inspired by um, Ella Feingold's inverted tuning. Uh, I thought it was very interesting, and it always uh, sparks interest in my mind. Of, I like tuning the guitar differently, sometimes lower, sometimes higher. And... Um, but I got it wrong in a, in a certain way, in a very specific way. Uh, credit where credit is due, Ella is doing a wonderful thing she calls inverted tuning, whereas um, she takes the low E and raises it not one octave, but two. The A string is raised one octave. Then the D and the G strings are the same and then there's two on the the skinny where the skinniest strings usually are there's a, a b and an e but they're in a um, very low range like they might be down in the bass strings okay so rj aronquilio and red Scholl and ella all got together and talked about it so you can find out about her tuning and how she uses it and then RJ made some adjustments as well it's all very interesting um, and then I did my stupid thing in the heat of the moment last night when I was making this video I kind of just jumped in and discovered that if I just raised the bottom two strings on the guitar um, which are E and A one octave up and leave everything else the same I could create some very, very interesting and usable clustery vo uh, voicings. Uh, I played a tune using it, and, you know, it was just the first um, uh, sort of exploration of it, you know. And then I slept on it a little bit, and I watched a few of Ella's videos again to see what I got wrong. <laughs> and um, so anyway, I just wanted to talk about what I ended up with here, First of all, no danger in harming the guitar. You take the D and G strings from your regular set of 11s or 10s or whatever you usually use and just put them down on the bottom two strings, the low two strings, which aren't lowest anymore, and then um, tune them only one whole step higher than they normally would be tuned. So you still have an E, A, D, G, B, E tuning. <laughs> But what the interesting thing, and I think the cool thing is, is for the longest time, I would take a regular chord and then I would, with a special technique that I learned from Ted Green, I would make a harmonic of the bottom note and uh, raise it an octave, leaving everything else the same. But it turns out with this tuning, I don't have to make the harmonic. I can just get that note. with the higher pitched strings. And it really suits me. It, they're, they're low enough so that it doesn't sound too twinkly, but you can get some very nice effects with where there's whole and half steps inside of the voicing, which is something that's always found very attractive. So then there's another aspect which I think is also very interesting, and I haven't explored it as much, which is the bottom strings are now in a range where we can put uh, color, uh, rather than thinking of this, them as being the roots of the chords, we can apply color, and inversions sound even more inverted. So uh, if I play um, like uh, two five one in the key of D major, there's a six. If I invert those chords. It 
it's really pretty. It really ends up being pretty. Between this note and this note, I have a half step, and it's just really beautiful to get that dominant seven flat nine chord with the, the half step against. I just love this sort of inside out, upside down thing. It's really wonderful, the surprising sounds that come out of really doing familiar movements. appeals to me about this is that I, I love half steps and whole steps fighting for space. It, there's just a beautiful, um, very exciting dissonance quality. So it's beauty and dissonance really mixed together, which I think is my favorite thing about playing guitar and the chromatic palette is to be able to mix the, the rubs with the sort of the lushness. And this just gives me a few more opportunities to have uh, those sounds available. Ah, oh, so beautiful. Anyway, my odd uh, interpretation of Ella Feingold's beautiful uh, kind of uh, exploration of flipping the tuning around, I do a less of it than she does, and also in, an, in a slightly different way. But thank you, Ella, for giving the, me the inspiration to get it wrong and still discover something really very beautiful. So check out Ella, and definitely check out uh, R.J. Ronquillo and and um, and Rhett Scholl's collaboration videos about this. And wouldn't it be great if people started finding different ways and new ways to make the guitar sound even more beautiful than it already does? Um, I, last night during my video, I, I said, I'm not sure I'm going to keep this guitar in this tuning, but now after I played it for another hour or so this morning, I'm starting to think maybe I will because it's just so perfectly wonderful.